Hello everyone. This week's lesson teaches us to learn how to put our desires in check for the Lord's desires. Yes, the Lord gives us the desires of our hearts, but we will also learn today that God has very grand desires for us as well. I assure you, what the Lord desires for you, it is a great deal better than what you desire for yourself. You will see that our lesson opens with the Lord speaking to the prophet Nathan. God, he is telling Nathan to deliver a message to David in response to David's desire to build a temple to the Lord. This is all in reference to how this chapter of 2 Samuel opens up for us. After bringing the Ark of the Covenant to the tabernacle in Jerusalem in the chapter prior, we'll see that David was contemplating how he was dwelling in a fancy home, but the Ark of God, the Ark of the Covenant, it was still in a tent. It was in the tabernacle. By this point in time, the tabernacle, it was a remnant of the days where the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness after being set free from the bondage of Egypt. And the Ark of the Covenant was still in that very same tabernacle. In fact, the Lord spoke to the fact that he had never dwelt in a house. He never dwelt in a permanent home, but that he moved with the children of Israel and would hover over the tabernacle when they rested. As the Lord said in the book of Isaiah, he does not need a permanent home of this world. You see, God is beyond this world. In fact, again, as we know, God, he created this world. Now, David, he felt that his desires were good. He, again, he had even spoke to Nathan about his desires. And the prophet said to him, go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. However, in the Lord's message to David, we can see that God was rebuking the idea of building him a home. So why was the Lord rebuking David in his desire? Well, it was all about following God's instructions. If there's anything that you should know that is important to God, it should be obedience. God desires that we keep, that we follow, that we are obedient to his instructions. So the Lord said to David, I instructed you to be a ruler over my people. He essentially said to David, I did not instruct you to do anything beyond that point. Though I imagine some of us, we would probably be wondering, well, why it was wrong for David to desire to do more for the Lord. Well, it's not necessarily that David was wrong in his desires. It's just that we should not go beyond God's desires. We should not go beyond God's will. The Lord explained it like this to David. He explained to David that he had been with David in all his doings. And because he, God, desired it, David was greatly blessed. This was according to God's will for David. The Lord then expressed that he had a great desire for his people. He said that he would plant them in a place of their own where the sons of wickedness would no longer oppress them. Now, we may think that God was speaking about the promised land, but God was not speaking about the promised land to David. The reason why we know that God was not speaking about the promised land was because the children of Israel, they were already in the promised land at that point in time. You see, God, he was speaking about a future, a future that is still to come. He was speaking about a future where all who have believed in him and on all who are blessed and highly favored, we will all dwell eternally in his heavenly kingdom. This is the Lord's greatest desire. This is his will for mankind. It is at this point in God's message to David where he begins to speak of the one who would come and establish David's kingdom forever. First, he speaks of Solomon, the seed that would be set up after David, that would establish his kingdom. Solomon, we know, was also the one to actually build the first temple. After speaking about Solomon, the Lord then spoke of the one that would build a house for the Lord's name. Not only would he build a house for the Lord's name, he would establish the throne of his kingdom forever. This, of course, speaks of Christ. The house, the house that God was speaking about, it was not of this world. No, the house for the Lord's name, it's not of this world. 
It is a house for all of those that would generally believe in the Lord. It is a house that is in the eternal heavenly kingdom. All of us who have genuinely believed, all of us who have genuinely believed in the only begotten son, we will be there in that house and we will be professing his name, worshiping the Lord forever and forevermore. Now we know that the only begotten son of God is in mind here because the Lord says plainly in this message that he would be his father and he would be his son. Jesus, we know, came from God and is God. Now this of course is some scripture that we will see in the next couple of lessons. Jesus, he was given to the world because God loved the world. The purpose of him being given to the world was to become the propitiation of our sins. He became the atonement offering for all of mankind. Jesus, he became sin for us and he suffered on the cross for us. Through his death and through his resurrection, we find mercy and we find favor in God's eyes. Jesus, he rose with all authority given to him and he will reign forevermore. So David desired to build a house for God, but the Lord was saying to him, I have better in mind for you and for all of those around you. Again, the lesson that we can take away from our lesson today is this. We may desire great things for ourselves and even for those who are around us, but God's desires, they are far greater than ours. As always, let us continue to trust in the Lord that he is going to give us the desires of our hearts or that he is going to give us even more than what we desire. What the Lord will give us will be perfect. All right, that is our lesson for this week. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson and I hope that you will share this lesson with someone somewhere. If you would like to go into more depth about this lesson, visit newfoundfaith.org where you can read my full commentary of this lesson or you can listen to my full audio commentary of this lesson. Be sure to subscribe here on YouTube for more videos like this one or to watch my weekly sermons. Thanks again. And I pray that the Lord will continue to keep and to bless all of you.